Hello, in this video I want to tell you about one particular slider inside Adobe Lightroom that you should absolutely avoid if you're working with your hyperlapses there. I will show you a hyperlapse that I have recently shot and to explain why the use of this develop setting pretty much ruined my final result. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so before I actually get into the why it happened, what exactly happened, how to avoid it, and what you can do instead to achieve a similar effect and avoid running into the similar problems that I run into, let me actually show you the hyperlapse that I'm referring to so you can better see what is going on so you and I are on the same page and you can see what is the actual problem that I am making this video about. So I'm gonna show you this hyperlapse in just a second. Pay attention to what is happening with this sky, especially at the beginning of this hyperlapse. Look into the top left corner of the image and let's watch it together right now. The way I was shooting this hyperlapse is basically the way you would shoot any time-lapse or hyperlapse in order to squeeze as much quality out of any camera, which is to just take a succession of images, just take a sequence of raw images from your camera, then develop them using the tools that you have like Adobe Lightroom, and then stick them into Premiere, stabilize them in case of a hyperlapse to produce a final result. And basically the time-lapse and the hyperlapse, the only difference is that in a hyperlapse the camera is moving, so you are moving with the camera, like for instance, is the hyperlapse that you have just seen. I was just taking exactly two steps between every frame in my hyperlapse. I was using an intervalometer to make sure that the duration between each shots is exactly the same. I was taking two steps and reframing my shot in order to make sure that this tower in the distance was staying in the exact same portion of the, of the screen. And this is basically the way you shoot a hyperlapse. So as you have probably noticed at the beginning of the time-lapse, it happens like two or three times even, there is this jump in the color of the the sky. This jump is very abrupt and it's very unnatural. If it was gradual I would be fine with that because the sky was moving, it was actually a sunrise so the clouds were moving, the sun was rising, the color temperature of the entire scene was changing. But the problem is that those changes were very abrupt. They looked jarring on the final hyperlapse and in my opinion this is kind of a deal breaker. This kind of error in a final sunrise hyperlapse like the one that you have just seen. And I was really stumped. I didn't know what exactly happened. The sky suddenly turned from this very warmish, kind of a grayish tones into this very vivid blue colors. Then after a few seconds it turned back into this gray and warm tones, then again blue, then again warm. And I didn't know what was going on. And at first I thought that maybe it's the problem with the LR time-lapse software. You know, this is the software that I use and I would generally recommend to use every time you work with time-lapses or hyperlapses that involve a sunrise or sunset because this is the software, it stands for, the name of it stands for Level and Ramp Time-lapse. LR time lapse. And if you are shooting a sunset or a sunrise, you need to adjust your camera settings as the sun goes up or down because the light of the, your scene changes dramatically. So the LR time lapse software levels those changes in camera settings so it is smooth. And you can also use it to ramp certain develop settings like exposure, like white balance, or something like this in order to compensate for the changes in light, color, temperature, and whatever is happening in your scene. So at first I thought, hmm, maybe LR time lapse actually made a very weird jump in white balance of my scene because it looks like a problem with white balance because the warm tones correspond to a high color temperature and the blue tones correspond to a low color temperature so I thought maybe there is a jump in white balance but that is not the case actually LR time-lapse did its job perfectly. The problem is the way that Lightroom interprets one particular develop setting. All right, enough secrecy, let's jump into Lightroom and let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so we are here in Lightroom and as you can see, I have a succession of my images right here and somewhere around this place, this is where there is the sudden change in the color temperature of the sky. Between this image and this image, if I click on both of them and compare them, you can see this huge change. There's also a change in the color of the grass right here. The grass right here is a little bit washed out, a little bit more yellowish. And right here is very vivid and very green. And like you see, the only change between those two shows, this is the exact same camera settings, 150 of a second, F10, ISO 100. And those two images were shot in seven seconds apart between each other. 
And the only thing that changed is that the framing is a little bit different. This is the first image, this is the second image. So as you can see on the first image, there is more of the tree here visible in this corner. And right here, I just moved two steps forward. So the tree is a little bit more cut off. So the sky on both of these images should look pretty much exactly the same with only maybe a slight movement in the clouds. So what exactly happened here? Well, let's take a closer look. So right here I am in the develop module and as you can see I have only those two frames isolated here on the on the bottom side. You have the first frame and the second frame with the problematic sky. So then I thought hmm, maybe my camera did something a little weird and bizarre while capturing these photos. So I went ahead and actually reset it all of the develop settings right here on both of these images. And if I click on the reset here on the left one and also reset on this one and then compare them as you can see they look pretty much the same. On both of these images, the grass looks the same, the sky looks the same, the tree looks the same. The tones and colors on both of these images are pretty much identical. So why after applying those develop settings, the sky looks dramatically different between those two images? Well, the culprit seems to be the dehaze slider. This is the whole mystery of this video. If I crank up the dehaze on this first image, as you can see, there are no other develop settings. The white balance is exactly the same. I was shooting daylight in my camera, fixed white balance for both of these images. And if I crank up the dehaze, let's say dehaze about 50, you can see that the first image is a little bit darker, more contrast, but pretty much looks natural in terms of the colors compared to the raw image. But if I sync these changes to the second image, just hit the previews here, as you can see, the sky looks terribly blue. And this is the problem. The dehaze slider is very unpredictable. And let me just show you that if I change any of the other develop settings, no such discrepancy will arise. So let's reset them both again. And let's apply something else. Let's focus on the first image and maybe we can warm it up a little bit. Maybe something like 6500. Raise a little bit of the exposure, maybe more contrast, highlights down. Maybe shadows up a little bit, a little bit of texture, a little bit of clarity and maybe some saturation. Okay, this looks pretty good. And now if I apply those exact same settings, like you see, I didn't touch the dehaze. If I apply them to the second image, it looks pretty much the same. There's no discrepancy. If I go to the compare view, you can see that they both look very good and there's no discrepancy in the colors of the sky. And now to make things a little bit even more interesting with the unpredictability of the dehaze slider, Let's see what happens if I add dehaze on top of those changes. So let's go to the dehaze 50. And again, let's sync it to the second image. And right now the sky didn't turn blue. So let's compare them again. And as you can see, the sky on both of these images looks pretty much the same. There's no discrepancy in the color. So what happens? What causes the problem with the dehaze in some situations and not the other? And as I have figured out, in case of these two images, the problem is the white balance. The white balance is somewhere here on top. And if I go back to 5500 of white balance and keep all of the other settings and then sync it, as you can see, the discrepancy comes back. Let's go to the compare view one more time. And as you can see clearly, there is a big change in the color of the sky between those two images. If I add dehaze and have my color temperature around 5500. Why? I don't know. The dehaze too, as you have seen in this example, just works in a very unpredictable way. And all of the other settings like exposure, like color temperature, the highlight slider, the shadow slider, the saturation slider, they are all operating pretty much very deterministically on the image data that you feed them with. But the dehaze tool, it works in kind of a magical way, you know. I was actually trying to reverse engineer how the dehaze slider works under the hood. I was testing it out on some very small resolution images like 10 by 10 pixels, and I couldn't really figure out what is it doing. The dehaze, the name, the dehaze Adobe is marketing it as a way to take away the haze in your images. So it must be analyzing the image, trying to figure out what is the haze in the image. And if you increase the dehaze, trying to take away this haze by enhancing the details in the image. And don't get me wrong, I love the dehaze slider and I use it a lot, especially in my sunsets or sunrise images. It works beautifully if you're working on a single image. But if you're working on a succession of images, like in a time-lapse or a hyperlapse, 
you may run into those problems that I have just demonstrated. It is just not predictable and I think it has something to do with the changes in the framing between those two shots because I was using dehaze perfectly fine in my time lapses where the camera was stationary and the only thing that changed was like some kind of uh, slight movement in the clouds in the sky. But right now, because I was also moving with the camera, the framing was changing a little bit, the tree on the right hand side was getting cut off by, by the movement that I was doing with the camera, maybe this slight change in the framing caused the dehaze algorithm implemented in Lightroom to change its behavior and, and give me this abrupt change in the color of the sky. So in general, I wouldn't recommend playing with the dehaze for neither time lapses nor hyperlapses. If you do use it and you may be fine you know don't get me wrong you may be fine it really depends on your situation but if you see some kind of a sudden shift in the white balance in your final hyperlapse definitely check out the dehaze try to render it out without the dehaze and see if there is any difference chances are that it's probably the dehaze that is causing these discrepancies and if you want to achieve a similar result without using the dehaze what you actually can do this is something fully supported by LR timelapse if you are importing your images using the LR timelapse workflow, and by the way, I have a full separate video tutorial about how to use LR timelapse and Adobe Lightroom in order to develop high quality time lapses or hyperlapses, definitely check out that video. I will link to it by the end of that one so you can check it out. I can highly recommend that if you didn't watch it. So make sure to stick around till the end of this video. We are getting wrapped up really soon. But I just wanted to mention that what you can do in LR timelapse if you import your images from LR timelapse into Lightroom is that you can use one of the four graduated filters that LR Timelapse put into your images. It may not be very clear at first, but if you go into the graduated filter icon, you can click right here, you can see those four pins and you can click on any of those pins and adjust only portion of the sky. So you can bring up saturation, you can increase contrast or something, you can change even the white balance of only the portion of the frame. And that way you can enhance how the sky is looking in your sunset or sunrise time lapses or hyperlapses. And this is the way I would recommend you to do that. I wouldn't recommend touching the dehaze for the reason that uh, I just mentioned in this video. All right, that's basically it for me. If you like this video, make sure to leave it a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate that. And also consider subscribing to this channel because I pretty much upload new videos every single week and browse from my channel. I already have a bunch of videos related to photography, filmmaking, post-processing, tutorials, vlogs in the field, how I do certain things behind the camera. So definitely check it out. You can probably find something interesting in there already. But like I said, subscribe for future videos. If you have any questions, comment down below. I pretty much answer every single comment I get on YouTube so you can always hit me up in the comments if something is unclear. But until next time, have a good day, see you next time and bye bye.